Hello, my name is Lara Keenan. I am the Governance and Management Consultant for the Vermont Department of Libraries. Thank you for joining me for this trustee training. I'm focusing with this training on succession planning. So what is succession planning? Well, I emphasize that we as a species are hardwired to focus on the fire in front of us and putting out that fire in front of us. We're not wired for long range thinking and for what succession planning is. And so it can be challenging to do this type of work, but it really is important to think about planning for the future governance of your library, which is what succession planning is. So basically it's planning for no matter who is on the trustees and no matter who your director is, the library can keep functioning and doesn't come to a grinding halt when someone has to step off the board due to illness or personal reasons, that you can just keep chugging along and you're set up for stability over time. And one of the ways you do this is really analyzing what are this, what's on your board currently in terms of skills, attributes, and talents? What are the connections of the people on your board currently? And what are you missing? And so I will show you a tool at a later slide for really assessing what are the skills, talents, and attributes that your board has and what does it need? Um, and that in the process of doing this, you really disclose what you've already got for connections. And thus, you know, if these people leave, you're going to lose these sort of connections and these skills and talents. And what is it that's absent? What is it that you need to look for out in the community and ask people to help the current board with with your projects? And in that and so doing grooming them for potential being potentially being future trustees or if you need to be recruiting right now, what boxes are or what um, areas are you missing that you really need to to reach out to the community for to, to make your board stronger? And after you've analyzed what it is you need, how do you find people with these skills, talents, and attributes? And in Vermont, like in many places, it really is all about who you know and about those personal connections. And so the board members should really think about who is it that they know who could meet these skills, talents, and attributes. Um, or if they can't, if the board can't think of anyone in the community specifically, um, who in the communi community might know someone else in the community who can make those connections for the board? Um, and really doing that legwork, of thinking about who makes up your community and and who is it that you that you might be able to reach out to specifically. Even if your board is elected rather than appointed, you can use this process to encourage specific people to run for election for your board. And once you've found folks, how do you attract them to the board? How do you encourage them to join the board? And with this, I always say it's about how you ask. Um, there are many ways to ask people to help you out and the more focused you can be in terms of what you're asking them to do, the time commitment, um, why you see their skills as being needed for the board, how their contributions can make a real difference. The more you can do that, the more likely you are to get a yes, especially if you think about who should be doing that asking and when and where. So for instance, um, I like to example I like to give is if you had to move on Saturday, um, think about the difference that you'd get in terms of sending out a blanket email or a Facebook post saying, hey, I need help moving on Saturday versus asking Joe specifically, hey, Joe, I could really use your help for an hour or two on Saturday. Um, your truck would be super useful. I would really appreciate if you could help me out. Would you be available? Those two will have very different responses. In addition, um, as you're thinking about how to ask someone, also think about how you're going to respond if they say no. You may respond by saying, we still could really use you. Would you be okay if I asked you again in the future? And if they said yes, ask them when they should. you should ask them again in the future. And then whatever they say, mark that down on your calendar so that you do ask them again. Because people like to feel needed, they'd like to feel pursued. And so the more that you can show them how much you need, their skills, talents, or attributes, um, and be very sincere about that, the more likely you are to get a yes. Even if it's a conditional yes, like I can't be on the board, but I can help you with one project, that in and of itself will make it easier for them to say yes in the future. And it's also important to tailor your message to their priorities. So for instance, you wouldn't have the same ask of, of a boomer as you would of a young parent because their priorities are different. So see if you can speak to those priorities when you make that ask. Now, here's a tool that you can use, a board planning matrix, uh, to sort of 
go through this and analyze who's on your board and what are you missing, I can email this to you if you contact me, uh, if you'd like a, a Word version of this to fill out. But how this works is each board member puts their name in a column and then goes down by each row and checks off which rows they meet. And in doing so, they disclose their talents, skills, and attributes to each other so you can see what's on the board. But you'll also have some blank squares. And those are the squares that you'll definitely want to recruit for in terms of helping the board with projects or people to recruit for future board members. In addition to analyzing your board makeup, you'll also want to consider, if you don't have these, creating job descriptions for your board officers. It's likely you have uh, basic job descriptions in your bylaws, but I'm talking about more specific detailed job descriptions. So if people want to step up into this position, you're really clear about your expectations um, and what actually happens in this position so that um, people know what's expected of them, but also so that if people have to step away from these positions, you're not scrambling to rely on their memory or anyone else's memory of what happens. The example of this I'd like to use is the treasurer, especially, you know, where are the accounts, the library accounts, who are the signatories? Um, how long does it take to get those replaced? Um, what software are you using? What's the subscription for that software? What's the um, sign-in information? That sort of information. If you don't have a, a calendar detailing your yearly tasks of the board, I highly encourage you to do this for so many reasons. It's a good recruitment tool so that people know what happens over time with the board so they get a better sense of what you do. It helps you plan your agendas for each of your meetings helps you plan ahead. So if you know what you're doing in December, you can know what you're doing in November and ahead of time to prepare you for December. But it also helps you if you have new tasks that come in, how to slot those in based on what you already tend to do. And then keeping those bylaws updated is very important. Again, it helps with recruitment. It helps new members know what's expected and it helps to make sure that the board is still on, on board with doing things correctly following their own laws. And last but not least, what do you do if your library director resigns? Well, hopefully you've created a plan so that you don't look like this picture, um, that you have a, the job descriptions updated, you know where you need to post it, you know what the, how to ask interview questions, you've got things set up, you've got resources set up so that if something happens with your director, you can speedily go through and, and replacing them so that the library can continue following and implementing your strategic plan and you're not scrambling. Hopefully that helped in the review of succession planning. I encourage you to reach out to me through email or phone or invite me to your trustee meetings if you'd like some additional training. Thank you.